Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm making scrap busting gnomes. They are round, very, very round with pre-made hats. And if you would like to make them, just boop, boop, stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here. It helps me out so much. All right, so this is what they look like. They are super cute. They're tiny or they're big, and they're basically whatever size you wanna make them, perfect for tiered trays, perfect to tuck in at the end of a craft booth. All right, so to get started, I just wanna tell you, it took me 25 minutes for both of them, and these hats were given to me by one of our viewers, hello, Linda, um, who said she has a lot of these and didn't know what to do with them. So just as a reference, these are purchased from Joann's and or Michael's, she couldn't remember, but they're two inches in that inside head area. We're gonna use some regular gnome making supplies, weight, fluff, and fabric. This, I'm going to start with the farmer gnome. I'm using an eight inch circle. This is a dinner plate. And so I'm just going to trace it onto the flannel. That's it. You can use a sewing marker, chalk, whatever. You can also use, there you go, a compass that you may be appropriated from your daughter's craft supply. Just saying. All right, so we're just gonna cut that out. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is not going to be seen. So just go ahead and cut that out quickly. In the center, you're gonna put your weight. So I'm just going to add this hot glue with, it's regular hot glue, it's not fabric hot glue or anything, just regular hot glue and these Dollar Tree rocks. Um, I think they're vase filler, not real sure. And then I'm gonna get a sturdy string of some kind. I have twine always, uh, so I cut a bit of that. And then I'm going to add my fluff in the middle. You can use extra fabric scraps, cutoffs, whatever. And then this gets really technical. Ready? You just gather it up. So pinch the center in between, bring up the side, pinch that in between, bring up the other side, pinch that in between. And then as you bring in the edges or the corners, just go ahead and just push the fluff in towards the center so it doesn't come out the sides and then gather it all up in your hands like so and there's just booty okay so then you're just gonna wrap a couple of times i would recommend double double times and then uh wrap it around two times and then knot it and maybe triple <laughs> not it uh, because basically this is our entire thing here so make sure that you can drop it and it there you go and it kind of levels itself out and you can even pull up the sides and make sure you like the pleats and where everything is for the back of them. But basically I'm just gonna double knot it here and add hot glue so that it's sure not to ever come undone and then snip that off. That's it. All right, so now the fun part, we get to decide what fur we want. So I'm gonna give you a little thing because I know people are gonna ask me. This is a swatch of fur from fabric.com. So it's a swatch, it's about $3. The bad part is that they cut it with fluff and you end up making a oh, little fluff monster. But once you pull it all off, it's good for next time. All right, so I'm gonna make a two inch beard, cutting about a half inch down and then just a U shape just like so, cutting only the fabric backing. So can you cut fur with scissors? Yes. Is it super duper slow? Yes. So just use a straight blade of some kind, a razor, a, an X-Acto knife, anything. All right, pull that off and look it. Make sure you can find the front, like whatever you want for the front, but there's gonna be one where the, you know, it's not quite even, but it always points up. You want that one. So you want the one that points up. And then we're just gonna glue this little piece of fur right around. That's it. Are you impressed at how easy this craft is yet? <laughs> um, so I used a new fur, but this is obviously scrap busting because you only need about eight inches square of fabric and you only need a couple of inches worth of fur. I am going to pull it around my center piece so it kind of fans out on the side. All right, so next up is a nose. I'm going to use some pre-made clay ones that I have only because I felt that the wood was a little too close to this blonde fur. Uh, it's only about a two inch pile fur. If you use a Mongolian, do make sure that your um, circle is a little bit bigger. Otherwise, it's just gonna be swallowing up in it. 
All right, so attach the nose. I'm going to split the fur to its fabric backing using <laughs> the ends of my scissors. I mean, you can use a pencil, your fingernail, whatever. Just make sure that you can see the fabric backing and then add the hot glue right to that and then press your nose in, giving it an intense nose boop. Mine is uneven, so I was trying to find the best part of the nose. These are old clay noses. I love making noses from polymer clay. All right, so here he is. Look at him, he's so cute. Okay, now for the hat. So I've never seen these hats, so I have no idea if there's a front or if there's a back. Um, so I don't really know if I did this right, but basically I wanted the nose to show, so I put the shorter side in the front. So that's the bigger side, but you see right there, it's a little shorter. So I don't know if that's right but you could see his little face better, or lack of face better. So that's what I did. And to attach it, again, really technical, I put a whole bunch of hot glue on the top of that and then pressed it down. Yep, that's what I did. And then I put some on the top of the nose so that the it would always be you know, down on the front. There you go. <laughs> again, really technical. And then just to secure it because again, like dogs and kids and transit and everything, I just added a bit of hot glue. I pulled the hat or pulled the body down and then added the hot glue and then pressed the body into the hat. So yeah, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's the whole craft. Um, <laughs> I think he's super cute, but I made him a little pipe. Like I kind of was trying to make it a corn cob pipe, but then I got really lazy. So I just cut off two pieces of differently sized dowels. And then I took a marker and made a little middle part and then glued them together. <laughs> oh, if you are better at these kinds of things, make yourself a like a, a wheat, you know, like on a piece of wheat that you can be chewing on or something, but I'm not. So to in order to attach it, I just lifted up the fur and uh, like kind of pulled it away and then put this down right onto the fabric backing of that fur. It's kind of tucked up under the nose as well for a little stability, but this is what his back looks like. His no moody. All right, so setting that one aside, I was gonna use this cute buffalo check, but then I figured why not try a different material than flannel to see if it worked right because these are all experiments for me i don't have a plan uh they all pretty worked out so that's nice but they pretty much worked out but i did a um 10 inch circle for this one and did it the exact same way so put my rocks in put some fluff in but because this one was so thick i ended up going and doing a running stitch about a half inch from the edge all the way around and the reason i did that is because i needed to control how much bulk was going to be in the top of that hat so yeah just throw those extra fabric scraps in there some stuffing i wanted to make her robust and then that happened. So I redid the entire thing with a little bit of stitching and then I cut braids, or ponytails actually, because I was too lazy. So for these, I took a half inch of fabric and then I just glued it in the fabric backing, just picked it up and glued it together. That's it. If you don't have one of those awesome little hot glue handle thingies, um, let me know if you wanna know where I got it, it's cool. All right, then I glued those on, put a little hot glue right on the nose on the front and on the top of that big fabric thing all the way around the back. And then I just added a little bit of ribbon that I got from one of the craft stores. And then I found these little spiders that I used to scare my daughter many, many years ago. <laughs> anyway, stuck one of those on the front and stuck one of those on the back. And I looked for the little brooms that I had bought, you know, last year and I couldn't find them, but she'd be cute with a little broom, right? All right, I dovetailed the back of the, um, not dovetail, I don't know what that's called, but I made them look pretty and burned the ribbon on the edge. That one got fire. And then this is them. <laughs> so these are really cute. You can make sachet gnomes this way really super easily. So if you have anything that you want to use up some supplies, these scrap busting things are perfect. If you come across the tiny hats, they're super. Let me know down in the comments below which one is your favorite. As always, thanks for being here, and why not watch another gnome video? I have plenty.